two twin sisters. Obviously, they're twins. There's two of them. Yep. <laughs> Jay and today I'm here with my June wrap up for 2018. I actually had a crazy good reading month. I ended up reading 28 books. I'm going to be splitting this wrap up into three parts, technically four, but the first seven books that I read are going to be in my Cramathon wrap up and then there's going to be three parts of just after Cramathon. We got a lot of books to get through, so without further ado, let us get started. So like I said, the first seven books that I read are in the Cramathon wrap-up, which I'll leave a link down below and up there if y'all want to check out those books. The eighth book that I read this month is Cracked by K.M. Walton. I ended up giving this a three out of five stars on Goodreads. It follows two teenage boys who are leading very difficult lives. The first boy's name is Victor and he is invisible to pretty much everybody including his parents. The only person who seems to notice him is the school bully who is giving him a very rough time. The school bully's name is Bull Maverick and he is also dealing with some demons of his own. Bull's abusive grandfather and alcoholic mother don't make his life very easy so both boys end up trying to take matters into their own hands. Victor decides to take a bottle of his mother's sleep pills and Bull decides to stand up to his pop with a loaded gun and that's when they both wake up in the psych ward as roommates. The book was a super quick read. It flew by very fast but it was very boring in my opinion and the writing and characters were not very strong at all. I just really hated it, the dialogue between the characters. Teenagers don't talk the way that the author tried to portray it. I also really hated the like love heals all trope that the book employed. The dual perspective between the two boys I thought was really interesting because they kind of mirrored each other and you got to see one boy side of the story and then the other one the same event from his eyes which I thought was cool. I liked the attempt at the overall message for the book but I think that it was poorly executed so I just gave it a lower rating. The ninth book that I read this month was Every Last Lie by Mary Kubica and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows Clara Solberg who is devastated when she gets the news that her husband was killed in a car crash. Luckily her four-year-old daughter Maisie was uninjured in this crash. When Maisie begins having nightmares about the crash and starts giving little hints that the crash might have not been an accident after all, Clara decides to investigate Nick's death on her own. The way that this story was told was really interesting. It's told in alternating perspectives between Clara trying to figure out what happened to her husband after the crash and Nick before the crash and all the incidents that led to the accident. It was really interesting to see each chapter from Nick's perspective slowly bring each event to light which caused his death. I think that was a great mix of suspense and action at the same time. The only major downfall that I had with the book was Clara's character. Just for some reason, something about her rubbed me the wrong way and I did not like her at all. She was just annoying to me. For most of the story, I didn't really have any clue what was going on because Clara was so unreliable and just kept changing her mind repeatedly about what actually happened to Nick. I do think that the author did a great job keeping the story interesting and unpredictable because you had no idea what was happening half the time. Another thing is that I think that the ending was very anticlimactic and it just was kind of boring. I was just like, oh, that's it? all right the book's done so that kind of sucked the next book I have I really did not like it was a struggle to get through but it is The Creeping by Alexander Saroy and I ended up giving this a two out of five stars so the book follows Stella who went missing with her best friend Jeannie when they were very young. Stella ends up returning later that day, but Jeannie never comes back. 11 years later, Stella just wants to put the past behind her and have an incredible, unforgettable summer. But then on the anniversary of their disappearance, a body is discovered and Stella begins to remember things that she had been suppressing about that night. So initially I was drawn to this book because I thought the cover was super pretty but unfortunately the story inside the pretty cover was 
not good. I pretty much hated every single character except for Sam. Stella was snotty and a brat. Same with Zoe. I just could not stand them at all. I also think that the friendship between Stella and Zoe was extremely toxic and I don't think that young teenage girls should be reading about a friendship like that. In my opinion, there was just way too much romance in this book that took away from the overall creepy aspect that the author was trying to produce. It just felt like she was thrown in the romance at every possible turn and it just got annoying very quickly. I also just did not like the amount of name calling in this book. There was a lot of girls calling each other sluts and lesbos and fat and it just got to the point where I was like, all right, like, girl, we need to calm down with all this name calling because it ain't gonna help anybody. I was able to call the big plot twist very early in the story so the big like reveal was super anticlimactic for me. It was just kind of like, all right, cool. And I felt that nothing really happened in the book. It was very boring in my opinion. So that sucked. And also the dialogue was very cringy. At one point they literally wrote, wait, a bloody tampon second. So that happened. So yeah, just definitely not the book for me and I am not going to be keeping it and it's going to the thrift store. The next book that I read is called The Prophecy of Sisters and this is by Michelle Zink. I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. After the sudden and mysterious death of her father, Leah finds a very strange book in his library and it speaks of an ancient prophecy involving twin sisters and a demon named Samuel. As Leah becomes increasingly worried about the role that her sister Alice is going to play in the prophecy, she must also come to terms with the role that she is playing as well. I thought that the concept behind the prophecy was really interesting. Basically, there's a guardian and a gate. The guardian is basically supposed to protect the world from the demon Samuel, and the gate is supposed to give him access to the world. It was a really cool concept, but I'm still kind of confused with the distinguishable features between the two. I'm assuming that is going to be explained more in the second and third book of the trilogy, but I don't own them, so your girl doesn't know, like, if that's actually a thing. I thought that the overall pacing of the story was really well done. The plot was very predictable, but it was still enjoyable to me. I liked that it didn't feel very info dumpy. Everything was kind of revealed at the perfect time. I really liked Leah as a main character and the friendship between Leah, Sonia, and Louisa was really great. I really enjoyed it, but Alice kind of fell super short for me. I didn't really give a shit what happened to her, to be honest. I was kind of like, okay, bye, like you can die and I don't really care. She doesn't die, but still, you get my point. Overall, it was a super quick, fun read, but I'm not dying to get to the second and third book, but I'll pick them up if I end up finding them at the thrift store or something. The next book I have is What I Thought Was True by Huntley Fitzpatrick, and I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Grace Castle, who has always lived on the island, but she's always dreamed of leaving. This summer, she ends up getting a job caring for a little old lady who took a fall earlier in the year and needs a little bit of extra help. When Cassidy Summers, a boy who Gwen has a little bit of a history with, gets the yard boy job on the island, she decides that she needs to avoid him at all costs. But as the summer goes on, they grow increasingly closer. I got bored of the characters very quickly. I got bored of the storyline very quickly. I didn't care about what happened to anybody. The only character I sort of liked was Cass. I hated Gwen as a main character. Pretty much the entire story was just her being obsessed with Cass and how hot he is, but then getting really pissed off whenever he showed any interest in her whatsoever so it was kind of like what are you doing like you want this boy you're telling everybody how hot he is but then when he shows even the slightest bit of affection for you you're like okay bro like you're being too much like you need to back up off me it was also super annoying because the author kept mentioning about this like huge thing that happened between Gwen and Cass but we never get to know what it is that happened between them until like the last 10 pages of the book. So like, why was there such a buildup? And the event isn't even a big thing. Like it was 
stupid. It was the stupidest reveal ever. It was just a waste of time in a book. I don't know, it just definitely was not the book for me, but a lot of people seem to like it, so I don't know if it's a just me thing. The next book I read was The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager, and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. 15 years ago, three out of four girls from a summer camp ended up going missing from their cabin. Emma, the remaining camper, is now a very successful painter, but she is very troubled by the disappearance of her friends, and she is constantly including them in her paintings before covering them with layers of paint. One day, the owner of the camp offers her a position to return in order to be the camp's art teacher for the summer. She ends up accepting, if only to discover what actually happened to the girls that night, and finally come to terms with her role that she played in the disappearance. I really like the timeline the story was told in. It had flashbacks from 15 years ago while Emma and the girls attended camp, but then it also had present when she returned as the art teacher and it slowly kind of brought everything together for the big reveal. I did find that it was very slow to start and it kind of dragged a little bit, but once the story picked up and things started to get revealed, it was definitely interesting and I was intrigued and needed to know what actually happened to the three girls. I really liked how unreliable Emma was and how it was very difficult to predict what was happening because of how unreliable she was. I really liked how everybody was a suspect and you didn't really know who actually could have done it and who didn't do it and it was just this whole mess and the ending I did not see coming at all, did not even cross my mind, so well played Mr. Author. Well Play. Overall, I definitely think that it is worth the read. Push through the boring beginning because it's definitely worth it in the end. Then the final book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows 16-year-old Jacob Portman who is devastated when his grandfather is killed suddenly. Unable to rid himself of his grief, Jacob and his father decide to travel to Wales. Wales is the origin of all these fantastical stories that his grandfather used to tell him when he was a child. Upon arriving, Jacob discovers that the orphanage that his grandfather talked about so often, run by Miss Peregrine, no longer exists and it's just a ruin. It's no longer occupied by Miss Peregrine or the peculiar children. Or is it? I had super high expectations of this book because everybody talks about how incredible it is. I think because I saw the movie before I read the story, I kind of knew everything that was happening so I didn't really feel that invested in any of the characters. I knew the storyline. I'm hoping that if I pick up the second and third book, I'll like it a lot more because I don't know the story. It seemed to be flipping through the pages so that I could see the pretty pictures. So, I don't know. Honestly, I think I was just so overhyped on this book that it just fell short for me, but Hopefully book two and three are better. We'll see, I guess. All right, guys, so that was part one of this June wrap-up of 28 books. I've wrapped up a total of 14 so far, so if you guys want to see the first seven books of my June reading month, then check out the Cramathon wrap-up. But let me know down below if you've read any of these, what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye!